Welcome to this video on up-potting small passion fruit. Today, we're gonna to talk about two things. The first is determining when you need to up-pot your small passion fruit plant. Perhaps you got it from an online store or you took cuttings like I did. And we're gonna talk about what is the specific time when we think we need to up-pot it. Parallel with this, we're also gonna talk about what type of potting mix I use and how I've had success with them. And this all comes in light of thinking about how do we get our passion fruit from small plants like this to some of the bigger plants that I have growing in, in my yard here. Specifically with pots, that is one of the most challenging things, as you can imagine, of growing passion fruit in containers. The pot size is a huge limiting factor because passion fruit have really expansive root bases. So thinking about this, this is to help you get set up and start your own journey with passion fruit. So let's get started by talking about how do we know when to up pot our passion fruit? So for me, when I'm growing passion fruit, typically after I do a cutting or I buy a plant from a store, I try to keep the plant in a contained area out of direct sun. I try to make sure it has lots of water. And for these plants here, I've had them sitting in a drainage container with a little water at the bottom most of the time. And the signal for me when I need to up pot plants of this size, these are in pots that are pretty similar to what you might buy like a small vegetable in. I think they might be, some of them might be like, yeah, there's pretty small plants, is when you see roots. And actually, if you notice here in the video, you can actually see a root crawling out of the base of this plant. And the funny thing with growing passion fruit in pots is I found that happen a ton. So last year, which was kind of my first real year of growing some bigger plants, I had multiple giant plants grow roots out the bottom in places where there weren't even soil to try to get enough moisture, which really pretty much highlights the dynamic that we're seeing with passion fruit, that they have large root systems, they need tons of water, and that's your main challenge with growing them in pots. So my indication for when I need to change them up is when I'm seeing roots out the bottom. For me, this is very much dependent on having them in kind of a place where the base is wet so that they actually have an incentive. So let's just grab this one passion fruit that we see here and take a look at the bottom. I have some other ones like this, but this is probably the most evident example. You can see it's very clear like that. We might not see totally kind of root bound dynamics at the top, but that's an indication that for this plant, it'd be a good time to up pot it. Uh, these are all mostly edulous plants. So that's purple passion fruit. At the end, we actually have a sweet granadilla. Oh, that's actually the giant granadilla. And we have a sweet granadilla here. So we're gonna take two of these plants just as examples to give you an idea of how to up pot them. Clearly, if you're watching this video, you might be interested in, in how do I up pot one of my passion fruit if it's a lot larger. The same principles apply and I'll do a video whenever I have one of my bigger plants to up pot. I have a lot in different sizes at this point in time, but I don't have specific goals when I'm recording this of up potting one of them. But anyways, let's do a cut and jump to seeing how we up pot our passion fruit. All right, so we now got the materials we need here. We got some soil and these two bigger five gallon pots. We got the pots we're gonna up pot them in. And we got the two passion fruit that are gonna be our examples here. So we've got uh, a Nancy Garrison or purple possum. This one's doing really well. You can see it's really big in here. Definitely needs an up potting. And we have a sweet granadilla here, which this is a plant I got from uh, Grassy Knoll uh, Nursery. I'm definitely not sponsored by them. I just figure it's worth shouting them out because they're a cool small nursery. This plant, I don't know anywhere else you can get it, um, like realistically for a price that I think's fair. Like you might be able to find like legitimately, you might be able to find a plant like this on eBay for $40. So let's just jump into it and start with our pot sizes. So we're gonna pull over one of these pots. This is about a two and a half quart pot. So if you're probably like me, I had to look this up. I'm not super knowledgeable about all the pot sizes. This pot right here, it's generally the type of pot that you might see something like some of the smaller blueberries at Home Depot, raspberries, blackberries, right? So this is kind of an idea of how big this plant is in here. The idea of going from this kind of small little uh, kind of, I'm not even sure what to call it, like a couple inch pot to one of these bigger ones is Passiflora have big root systems. We need to get them uh, growing and establishing themselves and a challenge with the summer, which is no exception for even these small plants, is that getting enough water is tough when you have 
this huge limiting factor that all our fortunate growers in these warm climates do not have. So we got our pots. Let's jump on the next step, which is the soil. So we're now going to jump on to our next question, which is what type of soil should I use when up potting passion fruit? So for me, all the starts that I have done, I've put them in pure citrus soil. If you read online, what it says for passion fruit is they like well draining soil. They don't like basically being too damp. Though the thing that we have to consider with growing passion fruit in pots is that we have really limited amount of space and plants dry out really quick. I'm gonna do some other videos in the future talking about how do we compensate for this lack of space with these expansive root systems. But I can say for starting things out, all I've done and how I've had success is with pure citrus soil. I've used GNB Organics, that's what I've got just because if you've seen any of my other videos, I have a lot of citrus trees. But for this round, I'm gonna do a little bit of an experiment. I'm gonna mix in some peat moss. So here we got some GMB organic soil. I got some peat moss here. Part of the idea of peat moss is that passiflora, they need slightly acidic soil. Where I live, we have very alkaline water. And I figured it makes sense with kind of the ret soil retention dynamics. At this point with these two small plants, I'm not that concerned about that. I'm gonna be the, have them in a controlled environment. I can always put them in more shade, but I think it's a good start to try to think about getting the soil pH right so that these plants can thrive. So I'm gonna mix in a little bit of this peat moss I've got here with my citrus soil. You can see in here that I actually, looks like I got a little bit of perlite mixed in. I just got a lot left over and done some mixing. So let's jump into it and start off. So with up potting these passiflora from a pretty small pot to a bit bigger one, we need to do some backfilling first, kind of standard procedure. So we're gonna take this in here, I'm gonna fill it up with some soil. It's a little bit hard doing this when you got one hand and you're filming it, probably be a bit easier. We're gonna fill this up a little bit, like so. So we got a little bit of a base in here with this citrus soil. Then we're gonna take some of our peat moss here, kind of mix it in. So the idea of the peat moss is twofold. The first up part that we're thinking about with this, is that we're thinking about water retention, that passiflora dry out super quick when you're growing them in pots. So having a soil that even though what they say about passion fruit is they like really well draining soil, uh, that, that you still, you need to think about this type of dynamic that we're growing them in a way that is not consistent with how most people are growing them, that they get to these massive sizes, they have these huge root bases, I don't even know what percentage of the root base some of my bigger plants have compared to the type of things you'd see in Florida, maybe San Diego and such. So we got this mixed up. You can see that's like that. We can even take this out and do a little test here with our plant. Just see how this will fit in. It looks like it's going to fit in pretty good because we got some other space here. Maybe we can make like a little indent in the soil right like that. So now I'm going to go do another setup to figure out how I can show you how do we take this out. All right, so we got our purple passion fruit plant here. As you can see, this is it. So kind of one of the things we want to consider when transplanting, and this definitely applies to some of our bigger pots, is we don't want to just yank it out because some of these roots are really fragile. If you have the plant that's totally root bound, it might work, but kind of a general rule of thumb, especially with like other plants, what you want to want to do is if you have a really big plant, just a tip, typically you're going to have a big type of trellis support structure. What I do is I go and tip them on their side on a big part of the ground, and then I kind of wiggle them out. But for this plant, I can kind of put my hand over this like that, you can see, just kind of tap it out like that. Little, Do a little shake. So let's look at that root system. So that is a great root system. You see that? That's a huge indication it's time to up pot. So let's see right here, we got our other pot. So all we're gonna do, we're gonna pop it in then we're gonna do some filling with soil and that's pretty much it. So let's do the other one and jump back. All right, so we're back and we got both these plants in pots. We got a little bit of soil to put on the top and there's just two things I wanna talk about. So the first is fertilizer. One thing with passiflora is you can see I put some organic fertilizer in here. You could probably mix in some in kind of lower parts of the container is that they do not like, or it's not good if you want fruit to have high nitrogen fertilizers. So with these having something that's a little bit uh, higher in the P, uh, specifically for like roots and for fruit is better. The other thing you can kind of consider if you have a cutting is that sometimes when you, when you typically do the cutting, you typically put the base of the plant a little bit lower down. And what you can do 
when you get to probably this size pot is you can clear off some of this other stuff around kind of this base here. That's what I did. So with that, we're going to just uh, grab some soil. All we're gonna do, do this, kind of add that here. You can see that, add that. So we get all these to the top, maybe put in a little bit of peat, just kind of that general mix, thinking about water retention. Uh, then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do it for the rest. All right, so fast forward a couple minutes later, I just had to wait for the sounds of construction to end. We've got this all finished off. We've got our uh, sweet granadilla. It's also known as ligularis in our purple passion fruit pot potted. We got all our other plants up potted and that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go water these, put them in a shady area, let them chill out. Uh, that's essentially how you up pop small passion fruit plants. There's a little bit different of a process with the bigger ones, but same concepts. So if you're interested in seeing what my plans are for some of these small ones, I got some cool ideas in the future. Uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Um, and yeah, take care.